Welcome learners in yet another video lesson of course code 503 unit 2 on Indian languages of DLED program. The topic of today's lesson is what does Indian constitution say about languages. Before going through the topic, I just want to discuss the proposed flow of today's video lesson. We would go through first with the lesson guide. I would also share the expectations in terms of learning objectives or learning outcomes after going through the lesson. We will discuss language, what and what for. We will discuss about Indian constitution and introduction. We will also discuss about language and Indian constitution. We will also discuss in this lesson about language education policy in India. We will recapitulate at the end and there would be a take home task. My dear friends, there is a lesson guide in front of you which I want to share with you that while presenting the topic, I will explain the concept. You need to attend to my voice and the slides as well. You will find important words, sentences have been highlighted for your attention. I have also put summary at the end for retention and I have put some questions or exercises in, in between and at the end of my presentation. So you must attempt to answer those questions or perform those exercises after going through the video sessions. Here are the learning objectives or learning outcome expectation. After finishing this lesson, you would be able to understand the concept on the function of language, get a glimpse of Indian constitution, you would be able to know what constitution say about languages in India, you would be able to familiarize with various language categories, you would be able to understand the status of Hindi and English as languages in India and you would be able to understand the three language formula. My dear learners, if I ask a question from you that what a language is or how would you define the language? I would rather get an answer as language is a mean of communication. It's a mean through we communicate, through we understand, through we make meaning out of the things which are happening around us. If you talk about the characteristic of language, language is invariably social in its nature. It means it is shared by the people, it is social in its nature and it has a specific history. Language is there with us in different forms since our inception on this earth. Therefore, as far as the characteristic of the language are considered, language is social, historical and shared. It means that we the people are sharing or are communicating words or are sharing our feelings and emotions with each other through the medium of language. Therefore, the language plays two functions, one at micro level that is for individual or at macro level that is for the society or otherwise we can also categorize the functions of the language as physiological to release the physical and neural energy, fetic function that is the function of sociability, identification function through language only we can identify the thing around us pleasure function, we get pleasure and we express our joy and fun through language only. Language also plays an instrument of our thought that is it plays the function of reasoning as well as communication. It also links the individual and the society. Therefore, the language broadly is a mean of communication which operates or joins the individual with himself or herself along with joining on relating the individual with the society. What is Indian constitution? Because 
In this lesson, our focus is on what constitution says about Indian language. Before going on that, we should understand what is our constitution. The constitution of India can be understood as the soul or power of India. The constitution of India can be considered as the thing through which the Indian government and the India as a country is operating and performing. It is the supreme law. It gives birth to other rules, laws, policy and governance. Only it is constitution which gives direction to the people of India, to the government of India, to the functionaries of India and to India as a nation, as a state. Our constitution is organized in a preamble which speaks about the spirit of Indian constitution which should always be kept intact. The spirit of Indian constitution or the soul of Indian constitution cannot be changed. Then it has article which are 448 in numbers. Then there are parts. At present we are having 25 parts in Indian constitution. Then there are schedules, we are having 12 schedules in Indian constitution. These schedules categorize and tabulate bureaucratic activity and policy of the government. And our Indian constitution, the world's largest constitution has gone through or witnessed 118 amendments till date. Now, what Indian constitution says about languages? India is primarily characterized by cultural diversity. We are having linguistic diversity, but in constitution we are having its basic or core values as national integrity, equality, justice and sovereignty. Therefore, Indian constitution needs to address the internal conflicts in India which are there due to linguistic diversity and cultural diversity. It needs to negotiate between the groups which are having different lingual and cultural identities. Therefore, the constitution of India elaborately deals with language as a subject. In Indian constitution, we found two direct places where the languages are referred in part 17 of Indian constitution and in 8th schedule of Indian constitution. The part 17 of Indian constitution primarily speaks about the place of language in the governance. That is, it speaks about official language. It is divided in four chapter. Chapter 1 speaks about language of the union which is accepted as Hindi as official language. Chapter 2 talks about regional languages that is the languages of the state. Chapter 3 talks about languages of the Supreme Court or High Court or the language of the judiciary which is Hindi and English and chapter 4 speaks about special directives. Chapter 1 has article 343 which talks about official language of the union, article 344 which talks about commission and committees of parliament on official language that is Hindi and co-official language that is English. Article 345 talks about official language or the languages of the state. At present we are having 29 states in India and Article 345 speaks about in which language these 29 states should hold their work. Article 346 speaks about official language for communication between one state and other or between a state and the union. Therefore, this article talks about the language of the relationship or the communication between state and a state or between state and a union. Article 347 in chapter 2 of part 17 speaks about special provisions related to 
language spoken by a section of population of a state. Chapter 3 which is on language of the courts has article 348 and 349 into it. Article 349 talks about language to be used in the Supreme Court and in the High Court and for acts and bills etc. Article 349 talks about special procedures for enactment of certain laws relating to language. Chapter 4 which is on special directives in Indian constitutions part 17 on official language has one arti two article into it which is article 350 and 351. Article 350 speaks about language to be used in representation for redressal of grievances. It has two subparts, Article 350A, which facilitates for instruction in mother tongue at primary stage. Therefore, Article 350 has special reference to education at elementary level. Article 350B, which speaks about special officer for linguistic minority. It has also a special reference to the education at elementary level. Then we are having article 351 as second article which speaks about directives for development of the Hindi language. My dear learners, you must be knowing that Hindi is not yet been accepted as official language by all the states of India. Therefore, article 351 has special reference as far as Hindi as official language is concerned. It gives directions to requisite developments for the Hindi language by the time it has not been accepted by all the states of India. Then the second important place in Indian constitution where the languages are referred is its eighth schedule which consists of 22 languages. These 22 languages are Assami, Bengali, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Manipuri, Malayalam, Konkani, Marathi, Nepali, Konkani, Marathi, Telugu, Urdu, Santhali, Bodo, Maithili and Dogri. So these 22 languages are there. The 8th schedule primarily started with 14 languages when it was conceived at the time of making of constitution is just have 14 languages in, into it. The first amendment related to addition of languages in 8th schedule was there in 1967 which is called as 21st amendment through which the Sindhi language was added to 8th schedule. Through 71st amendment in 1992, three more languages Konkani, Manipuri and Nepali were added to 8th schedule of constitution. Then with 92nd amendment in constitution in 2003, four more languages were added namely Santhali, Maithili, Bodo and Dogri. My dear learners, besides schedule languages, we are having two more linguistic categories in which languages in India are categorized which are regional languages and mother tongue and classical languages. As we have already discussed that scheduled languages are the languages which have been listed or scheduled in the 8th schedule of Indian constitution. These are the languages which are listed in the 8th schedule and their name and status changes and these are also be called as or identified as modern Indian languages. Now the question comes then what are the regional languages or the mother tongue? The mother tongue refers to the language in which a person's mother speaks to him or her in their childhood. If the mother is not present, then the language spoken at home will be the mother tongue. If there is still doubt, then the language mostly spoken at home is the mother tongue. There are 1652 identified mother tongues in India. Then there are regional languages. Regional languages are identified mother languages or major languages 
which are not there in 8th schedule of Indian constitution and these identified regional languages are 100 in numbers. Then we are having another category of linguistic distinction or categorization which is called the category of classical languages. Classical languages are the languages which have a long history in terms of grammar and literature. The criteria for distinguishing any language as classical language are these languages should have a long history of the written literature approximately of 1500 to 2000 years old. Then these languages should have some ancient literature or epic in that particular language and then epic or literature should be considered as the valuable resource by the speakers of that language. Then the language which is supposed to be categorized as classical language should have original literacy tradition. That is this literacy tradition should not be borrowed from the other language communities. At present we are having four classical languages which are Tamil which have been given the status of classical language in 2004, Sanskrit which have been given the status of classical language in 2005, Kannada and Telugu which have been given the status of classical language in 2008. Now the question comes what is the status of Hindi and English as languages in India? How we look at Hindi and how we look at English as language in India and how the constitution of India perceives the status of Hindi and English in India. As far as the Hindi is considered, it has been accepted as official language in Indian constitution. The constitution assembly on 14th September 1949 adopted Hindi as the official language of Indian Union. There was a close tussle between Hindi and Hindustani to be the official language and my dear learners you would be surprised to know that Hindi wins the battle only with one extra vote. There was a close tie between Hindi and Hindustani. Hindi is the language which is not influenced by other dialects of Hindi whereas Hindustani is a mixture or amalgamation of Hindi and Urdu language. Hindi in its true form which have been accepted as official language of Indian constitution does not contain any word of Sanskrit, Arabic or Farsi and Hindi is accepted as official language of both the central government and various state government such as Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh and Himachal. What is the status of English in Indian constitution? English is taken as or accepted as co-official language as per Indian constitution. My dear learners, in the last lesson we have discussed about the anti-Hindi movement from the southern states of India. This is the reason why even after the vanishing of the British rule on India, English is still existing in India as co-official language. The co-official language is the language in which the official work of the government runs or is to be done by the time the Hindi is accepted as official language by all the states of India. English is the language of market. English is also facilitate connections with the world. Keeping in mind these things, English has been given an important space or place in India in all the policies related to language. The main policy or the major policy which is very much relevant to the educational scenario of India is the three language formula through which the Indian language education primarily governs. 
This formula was proposed by Indian Education Commission 1964 and 66 and has been formally implemented by National Policy on Education in 1968. What is this three language formula? Let us know. The three language formula which is operating on elementary school considered the first language to be studied at elementary school is the mother tongue or regional language. The second language could be which should be studied at elementary school, any modern language or English in Hindi speaking states and Hindi or English in non-Hindi speaking states. The third language which should be studied up to elementary schools in India is English or any other modern Indian language which is not been taught as the second language in both Hindi and non-Hindi speaking states. The question comes why three language formula? Three language formula is only there to facilitate the linguistic diversity or to keep it or to flourish the linguistic diversity we have and to facilitate the communication between the citizens of India. Every child should have the functional efficiency in usage of at least three languages which have up till the pass of eighth class from, from the schooling. It is expected to have the functional knowledge of at least two languages besides the mother tongue or the regional language by all the child, all the children in India. To sum up the lesson, India is characterized by rich linguistic diversity and resulting in internal conflicts and pressure. Promotion of unity and national integration are required to be balanced with sustaining linguistic diversity. The constitution of India which is the supreme Indian law through its part 17 and 8 schedule attempts to fulfill both the objectives effectively. It recognizes 22 languages as scheduled languages and takes Hindi as official language and English as co-official language. Scheduled languages are also termed as modern Indian languages. Besides, there are 100 non-scheduled or regional languages along with 1,652 mother tongues. The languages with identified long history are termed as classical languages. The linguistic diversity of India demands each of its citizens to be multilingual, to be connected with each other. Therefore, the language education policy recommends study of at least three languages up to elementary level to promote functional knowledge of two more languages besides mother tongues amongst the learner. Now, it's time to take home task and in take home task, I expect to you as a learner to answer the following three questions. The first question is English continues to play an important role in independent India even through it is a colonial language. Why? The second question is, keeping in mind the status of your state in terms of Hindi or non-Hindi speaking state, enumerate the three language formula for your state. The third question is, identify articles in Indian constitution which have direct bearing to language policy in India. With this, I thank you all to attend this video lesson, will meet you next time in next video lesson. By that time, thank you and goodbye.